Reach in my purse and get me a cigarette without no powder in it if you can, Miss Bletcher, honey, said Leota to her ten o'clock shampoo and set customer. I don't like no perfume cigarettes. Miss Bletcher gladly reached over to the shelf, shook a hairnet loose from the clasp of the patent leather bag, and slapped her hand down quickly on a powder puff which burst out when the purse was open. Why, look at the peanuts, Leota, said Miss Bletcher in her marveling voice. Honey, them goobers has been in my purse a week if they's been in in a day. Miss Pike bought them peanuts. Who's Miss Pike? asked Miss Bletcher, settling back. Hidden in this den of curling fluid and henna packs, separated by a lavender swing door from the other customers who were being gratified in other booths, she could give her curiosity its freedom. She looked expectantly at the black part in Leota's yellow curls as she bent to light the cigarette. Miss Pike is this lady from New Orleans, said Leota, puffing and pressing into Miss Fletcher's scalp with strong red nail fingers. A friend, not a customer. You see, like maybe I told you last time, me and Fred and Sal and Joe all had us a fuss. So Sal and Joe up and moved out, so we didn't do a thing but rent out their room. So we rented it to Miss Pike and Mr. Pike. She flicked an ash into the basket of dirty towels. Miss Pike is a very decided blonde. She bought me the peanuts. She must be cute, said Miss Fletcher. Honey, cute ain't the word for what she is. I'm telling you, Miss Pike is attractive. She has her a good time. She's got a sharp eye out, Miss Pike has. She dashed the comb through the air and paused dramatically as a cloud of Miss Fletcher's hennaed hair floated out like a small storm cloud. Hair fallen. Oh, Leota. Uh-huh, commencing to fall out, said Leota, combing again and letting fall another cloud. Is it any dandruff in it? Miss Fletcher was frowning, her hairline eyebrows diving down toward her nose and her wrinkled, beady-lashed eyelids batting with concentration. Nope, she combed again, just falling out. Bet it was that last permanent you gave me, did it, Miss Fletcher said cruelly. Remember, you cooked me fourteen minutes. You had fourteen minutes coming to you, said Leota. Bound to be something, persisted Miss Fletcher. Dandruff, dandruff. I couldn't have caught a thing like that from Mr. Fletcher, could I? Well, Leota answered at last. You know what I heard in here yesterday. One of Thelma's ladies was sitting over yonder in Thelma's booth, and I don't mean to insist or insinuate or anything, Miss Fletcher, but Thelma's lady just happened to throw out, I forgot what she was talking about at the time, that you was P-R-E-G. And lots of times that'll make your head do awful funny. Fall out and God knows what all. It just ain't our fault is the way I look at it. There was a pause. The women stared at each other in the mirror. Who was it? demanded Miss Fletcher. Honey, I really couldn't say, said Leota. Not that you look it. Where's Thelma? I'll get it out of her, said Miss Fletcher. Now, honey, I wouldn't go and get mad over a little thing like that, Leota said, combing hastily, as though to hold Miss Fletcher down by the hair. I'm sure it was somebody didn't mean you no harm in the world. How far gone are you? Just wait, said Miss Fletcher, and shrieked for Thelma, who came in and took a drag from Leota's cigarette. Thelma, honey, throw your mind back to yes, Titty, if you can, said Leota, drenching Miss Fletcher's hair with a thick fluid and catching the overflow in a cold, wet towel at her neck. And try to remember who your lady was who happened to mention my customer was pregnant, that's all. She's dead to know. Thelma drooped her blood-red lips and looked over Miss Fletcher's head into the mirror. Why, honey, I ain't got the faintest, she breathed. I really don't recollect the faintest. But I'm sure she meant no harm. Was it that Miss Hutchinson? Miss Fletcher was tensely polite. Miss Hutchinson? Oh, Miss Hutchinson. Thelma batted her eyes. No, precious, she come on Thursday and didn't even know your name. I doubt her she even knows you on the way. Thelma, cried Leota staunchly. All I know is whoever it is will be sorry some day. Why, I just barely knew it myself, cried Miss Fletcher. Just let her wait. Why? What you gonna do to her? It was a child's voice, and the women looked down. A little boy was making tents with aluminum wave pinchers on the floor under the sink. Billy Boy Hon mustn't bother nice ladies, Leota smiled. Ain't Billy Boy a sight? Only three years old and already just nuts about the beauty parlor business. I never saw him here before, said Miss Fletcher, still unmollified. He ain't been here before, that's how come, said Leota. 
He belongs to Miss Pike. She got her a job, but it was Faye's millinery. He oughtn't to try on those ladies' hats. They come down over his eyes like I don't know what. They just get to look ridiculous, that's what. And of course he's going to put them on, hats. They told Miss Pike they didn't appreciate him hanging around there. Here he couldn't hurt a thing. Well, I don't like children that much, said Miss Fletcher. That Miss Hutchinson just looks straight through you when she sees you on the street and then spits at you behind your back. Mr. Fletcher would beat you on the head if you didn't have it now, said Leota reasonably, after going this far. Miss Fletcher sat up straight. Mr. Fletcher can't do a thing with me. He can't. Leota winked at herself in the mirror. No, sirree, he can't. If he so much as raises his voice against me, he knows good and well I'll have one of my sick headaches, and then I'm just not fit to live with. And if I really look that pregnant already... Well, now, honey, I just want you to know I haven't told any of my ladies, and I ain't going to tell them, even that you're losing your hair. You just get you one of those stark allure dresses and stop worrying. What people don't know don't hurt nobody, as Miss Pike says. Did you tell Mrs. Pike, asked Miss Fletcher sulkily. Well, Miss Fletcher, look, you ain't ever going to lay eyes on Miss Pike or her lay eyes on you, so what difference does it make in the long run? I knew it. Miss Fletcher deliberately nodded her head so as to destroy a ring that Leota was working on behind her ear. Mrs. Pike. Leota sighed. I reckon I might as well tell you. It wasn't any more Thelma's lady told me you was pregnant than a bat. Not Miss Hutchinson? No, Lord, it was Miss Pike. Mrs. Pike? Miss Fletcher could only sputter and that curling fluid roll into her ear. How could Mrs. Pike possibly know I was pregnant or otherwise when she doesn't even know me, the nerve of some people? Well, here's how it was. Remember Sunday? Yeah, said Miss Fletcher. Sunday, Miss Pike and me was all by ourselves. Mr. Pike and Fred had gone over to Eagle Lake saying they was going to catch them some fish, but they didn't, of course. So we was getting us a Jack's beer apiece. That's a beer Miss Pike says is made right in N.O. She won't drink no other kind. So I seen you drive up to the drugstore and run in for just a second, leaving, I reckon, Mr. Fletcher in the car, and come running out with look like a prescription. So I says to Miss Pike, just to be making talk, right on this Miss Fletcher. And I reckon that's Mr. Fletcher. She's one of my regular customers, I says. I had on a figured print, said Miss Fletcher tentatively. You sure did, agreed Leota. So Miss Pike, she give you a good look. She's very observant, good judge of character, cute as a minute, you know. And she says, I bet you another Jack sat ladies three months on the way. What gall, said Miss Fletcher. Mrs. Pike. Miss Pike ain't gonna bite you, said Leota. Miss Pike's a lovely girl. You'd be crazy about her, Miss Fletcher. But she can't sit still a minute. We went to the traveling freak show yesterday after work. I got through early, nine o'clock, in the bacon store next door. What? You ain't been? No, I despise freaks, declared Miss Fletcher. Oh, well, honey, talking about being pregnant and all, you ought to see those twins in a bottle. You really owe it to yourself. What twins, asked Miss Fletcher out of the side of her mouth. Well, honey, they got these two twins in a bottle, see? Born, John, plum together. Dead, of course. Leota dropped her voice into a soft, lyrical hum. They was about this long, and they had these two heads and two faces and four arms and four legs, all kind of John here. See, this face looked this way and the other face looked that way over that shoulder, see? Kind of pathetic. Gosh, said Miss Fletcher disapprovingly. Well, ugly, honey, I mean to tell you, their parents was first cousins and all like that. Billy Boy, get me a fresh towel from off Teeny's stack. This one's wringing wet and quit tickling my ankles with that curler. I declare he don't miss nothing. Me and Mr. Fletcher aren't one speck of kin. Oh, he could never have had me, said Miss Fletcher placidly. Of course not, protested Leota. Neither is me and Fred, not that we know of. Well, honey, what Miss Pike liked was the pygmies. They got these pygmies down there, too, and Miss Pike was just wild about them. You know the teeniest men in the universe? Well, honey, they can just rest back on their little bow hunkers and roll around, and you can't hardly tell if they're sitting or standing. That'll give you some idea. They're about 42 years old. Just suppose it was your husband. 
Well, Mr. Fletcher is five foot nine and one half, said Miss Fletcher quickly. Fred's five foot ten, said Leota, but I tell him he's still a shrimp, account of I'm so tall. She made a deep wave over Miss Fletcher's other temple with the comb. Well, these pygmies are kind of a dark brown, Miss Fletcher. Not bad looking for what they are, you know. I wouldn't care for them, said Miss Fletcher. What does that Miss Pike see in them? Oh, I don't know, said Leota. She's just cute, that's all. But they got this man, this petrified man, that everything, ever since he was nine years old, when he goes through his digestion, see, somehow Miss Pike says it goes to his joints and it's been turning to stone. How awful, said Miss Fletcher. He's 42, too. That looks like a bad age. Who said so? That Miss Pike? I bet she's 42, said Miss Fletcher. No, said Leota, Miss Pike's 33, born in January, an Aquarian. He could move his head like this. Of course, his head and mind ain't a joint, so to speak, and I guess his stomach ain't either, not yet anyways. But see, his food, he eats it, and he goes down, see, and then he digests it. Leota rose on her toes for an instant, and it goes out to his joints, and before you can say Jack Robinson, it's stone, pure stone. He's turned to stone. How'd you like to be married to a guy like that? All he can do, he can move his head just a quarter of an inch. Of course, he looks just terrible. I should think he would, said Miss Fletcher frostily. Mr. Fletcher takes bending exercises every night of the world. I make him. All Fred does is lay around the house like a rug. I wouldn't be surprised if he woke up someday and couldn't move. The petrified man just sat there, moving his quarter of an inch, though, said Leota reminiscently. Did Mrs. Pike like the petrified man, asked Miss Fletcher. Not as much as she did the other, said Leota deprecatingly. And then she likes a man to be a good dresser and all that. Is Mr. Pike a good dresser, asked Miss Fletcher skeptically. Oh, well, yeah, said Leota, but he's 12, 14 years old than her. She asked Lady Evangeline about him. Who's Lady Evangeline, asked Miss Fletcher. Well, this is mine, Rita. They got in the freak show, said Leota. It was real good. Lady Evangeline's her name. And if I had another dollar, I wouldn't do a thing but have my other palm read. She had what Miss Pike said was the sixth mind, but she had the worst manicure I ever saw in a living person. What did she tell Miss Pike, asked Miss Fletcher. She told her Mr. Pike was as true to her as he could be and besides would come into some money. Hmm, said Miss Fletcher. What does he do? I can't tell, said Leota, because he don't work. Lady Evangeline didn't tell me enough about my nature or anything, and I would like to go back and find out some more about this boy. Used to go with this boy till he got married to this girl. He married her for money. Another fortune teller told me that at the time. So I'm not in love with him anymore anyway, besides being married to Fred, but Miss Pike thought just for the hell of it. See, I asked Lady Evangeline, was he happy? And she said, just like she was glad I asked her, honey, she says, no, he isn't. You write down this day, March 8, 1941, she says, and mark it down. Three years from the day, him and her won't be occupying the same bed. There it is up on the wall with them other dates. See, Miss Fletcher? And she says, child, you ought to be glad you didn't get him because he's so mercenary. So I'm glad I married Fred. He sure ain't mercenary. Money don't mean a thing to him. But I sure would like to go back and have my other palm read. Did Miss Pike believe in what the fortune teller said, asked Miss Fletcher in a superior tone of voice. Lord, yes, yeah, she's from New Orleans. Everybody in New Orleans believes everything spooky. One of them in New Orleans before it was raided says to Miss Pike one summer she's going to go from state to state and meet some gray-headed men. And sure enough, she says she went on a beautician convention up to Chicago. Oh, said Miss Fletcher. Oh, is Miss Pike a beautician too? Sure she is, protested Leota. She's a beautician. I'm going to get her in here if I can. She says, sure enough, there was three men who was a very large part of making a trip what it was, and they all three had gray in the hair, and they went in six states. Got Christmas cards from them. Billy Barr, go see if Thelma's got any dry cotton. Look how Miss Fletcher's a-dripping.